Something unprecedented happened at the Dubai Air Show in 2025. Russia brought their Su-57 fighter jet, but this time, they weren't just showing off. They revealed a display model featuring a completely redesigned engine nozzle that's caught the attention of every military analyst around the globe. Now, you might be thinking, it's just an engine nozzle. What's the big deal? Well, stick around, because what this component represents goes far beyond simple engineering. We're talking about a fundamental shift in how stealth technology works, and the implications are massive. The angular, flat geometry you see on this nozzle isn't there for aesthetics. Every surface, every angle, every measurement serves a specific purpose, reducing detectability while maintaining incredible power output. Western defense experts are scrambling to understand how Russia managed to pull this off, and the answers are fascinating. The development story. Let's talk about what it took to create this thing. Russia didn't just sketch this design on a napkin and start building. This nozzle represents seven years of intensive development work and an investment of $127 million. To put that in perspective, that's more than some entire nations spend on their complete annual defense budgets. The engineering team tested 23 different prototype designs, but here's where it gets intense. 11 of those prototypes failed catastrophically during testing. We're talking about wind tunnel tests at speeds reaching Mach 2.8, with temperatures climbing past 1,800 degrees Celsius. One test prototype lasted just 47 seconds before it literally disintegrated. Engineers watch components worth millions melt in real time. The final design uses a specialized titanium rhenium alloy that costs $890 per kilogram. When you calculate the raw materials alone, each nozzle comes with a price tag of approximately $340,000. That's before any manufacturing costs or labor. The production process itself is remarkable. Engineers work three consecutive shifts for 18 months straight to perfect the manufacturing techniques. Quality control rejected 41% of the initial production units because of microscopic flaws that you couldn't even see without specialized equipment. The manufacturing facility operates under military-grade security with biometric access controls. Even senior executives from Sukhoi need special clearance just to walk onto the production floor. But here's what really turned heads at Dubai. Russia has already manufactured 34 of these nozzles. They're sitting in climate-controlled storage facilities right now ready for immediate integration the moment final testing wraps up. This isn't theoretical. This is production-ready hardware. Stealth capabilities. Now let's discuss what makes this nozzle so effective at avoiding detection. The Pentagon operates the AN-TPY-2 radar system. Each unit costs $574 million and has the capability to detect something as small as a golf ball from 4,700 kilometers away. That's the kind of sensitivity we're dealing with. Against this nozzle design, detection range drops to just 89 kilometers under optimal conditions. That's a reduction in detectability of over 98%. Think about what that means operationally. By the time this aircraft shows up on radar screens, the engagement window has shrunk dramatically. NATO ran classified simulations back in October 2024 using captured radar data. The results were so concerning that they remain sealed under special compartmented information protocols. Swedish defense analysts examined the display model and estimated that European air defense networks would need a complete redesign costing 14 billion euros just to maintain their current detection capabilities. The faceted surfaces on this nozzle create what radar engineers call ghost returns. These are false signals that appear roughly 23 kilometers away from where the aircraft actually is. Targeting computers and automated engagement systems get completely confused trying to track what's real and what's not. American defense contractors who saw the model in Dubai immediately recognized design elements similar to their own classified research programs. The catch? The United States abandoned those programs back in 2018 because the manufacturing complexity was too difficult to overcome. Russia apparently solved problems that stumped even Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works division. The Israeli Air Force conducted their own threat assessments. Their calculations showed that three Su-57s equipped with these nozzles could penetrate their multi-layered air defense grid without detection until they reached within 15 kilometers of strategic targets. That completely changes the threat calculation for the entire Middle Eastern region. Missile evasion. Let's talk about what this means in actual combat scenarios. In air combat, 
47 seconds can mean the difference between survival and catastrophe. That's exactly how much additional time this nozzle provides against heat-seeking missiles. Take the AIM-9X Sidewinder, which is America's most advanced infrared-guided missile. Against conventional fighter jet exhausts, it maintains lock at a maximum range of 35 kilometers. Against this new Su-57 nozzle, that range collapses down to just 18 kilometers. That's a reduction of the effective engagement envelope by 48.5%. Chinese PL-10 missiles perform even worse. They lose lock capability entirely below 22 kilometers because their seekers lack sufficient sensitivity to track the reduced thermal signature. During a classified test in 2023, a Su-57 prototype equipped with an early version of this nozzle evaded six consecutive missile launches. The aircraft didn't need to perform extreme maneuvers. It simply maintained super cruise speed and the missile seekers couldn't establish a stable track on the reduced thermal signature. This changes the fundamental calculus of air combat. Pilots who engage this aircraft will find their weapons effective at much shorter ranges than they've trained for, while the Su-57 maintains its full offensive capability. Engine performance. Now here's where things get really interesting. This nozzle doesn't just hide the aircraft better. It's connected to an engine that produces absolutely monstrous power. The Isdeli 30 engine generates 176 kilonewtons of thrust, that translates to 11,200 horsepower per engine. The Su-57 has two of these engines, giving it a combined output of 22,400 horsepower. To help you visualize that, imagine 15 Formula One race cars operating simultaneously inside one airframe. That's the kind of power we're talking about. The thrust to weight ratio sits at 11.2 to one, meaning each engine produces 11 times more thrust than its own weight. Compare that to the F-22's F-119 engine, which manages a ratio of 7.8 to 1. This power enables the Su-57 to accelerate from Mach 0.8 to Mach 2.0 in just 38 seconds. The F-35, by comparison, requires 67 seconds to make that same acceleration. The engine can sustain maximum afterburner for 8.4 minutes without exceeding thermal limits. The F-135 engine in the F-35 is restricted to 2.5 minutes, before it needs mandatory cooldown cycles. Russian test pilots have demonstrated vertical climbs exceeding 18,000 meters per minute. That means this aircraft climbs three kilometers straight up every 10 seconds. When Western observers first saw these performance figures, many questioned whether their instrumentation was actually working correctly. The revolutionary aspect of this nozzle is that it channels all this tremendous power while simultaneously reducing the aircraft's signature. Russia essentially created an engine that delivers overwhelming performance but maintains a minimal profile. That combination is what's causing such concern among defense planners. Operational deployment. This isn't a research project sitting in a laboratory somewhere. Russia is building an operational strike force. By 2028, 76 confirmed Su-57s equipped with these nozzles will enter active service. These aircraft will form six complete fighter regiments positioned at strategic bases surrounding NATO's eastern flank. Each regiment consists of 12 aircraft, and each aircraft can simultaneously engage multiple targets at ranges exceeding 300 kilometers using R-37M hypersonic missiles that travel at Mach 6. Do the math. 76 aircraft translates to 608 simultaneous long-range engagement capabilities against NATO airborne assets. The deployment locations are already designated. Kaliningrad places these aircraft just 600 kilometers from Berlin. Crimean bases position them 450 kilometers from Bucharest. Arctic installations give them dominance over Northern Europe's airspace. Western intelligence confirms that Russia has stockpiled 340 R-37M missiles, specifically for Su-57 operations. That's enough ammunition for sustained high-intensity operations, lasting 11 days without requiring resupply. NATO's air defense planning documents that leaked in early 2025 reveal that Alliance commanders consider even 12 Su-57s with these nozzles to be a critical level threat. Countering them requires coordinated response from multiple fighter squadrons and ground-based systems operating simultaneously. This represents an operational capability that's already moving into active deployment, not a future concept that might materialize someday. International interest. The Dubai Air Show became much more than just a display event. Seven countries lined up with serious procurement interest, representing a combined $22 billion in potential contracts. Algeria's defense delegation spent four hours examining the nozzle model and requested classified briefings about delivery timelines for 24 aircraft. 
Egypt's military attaché photographed the model from every angle and submitted preliminary letters of intent for 36 units to replace their aging MiG-29 fleets. The United Arab Emirates Defense Procurement Team conducted thermal signature assessments and discussed a potential order for 48 aircraft, which would make them the largest export customer for the Su-57. Turkey's representatives showed up despite their NATO membership, exploring options after their exclusion from the F-35 program left them searching for fifth-generation capability. Iran's delegation negotiated potential technology transfer agreements valued at $3.8 billion. Vietnam requested detailed performance data, specifically comparing the Su-57E against regional threats like China's J-20. The level of international interest demonstrates that this aircraft is viewed as a legitimate alternative to Western fifth-generation fighters, particularly for nations that can't access or afford American platforms. The Su-57's redesigned nozzle represents more than just an incremental upgrade to an existing aircraft. This is Russia making a statement that they're rewriting the established rules of stealth technology while the international community watches. Despite facing significant obstacles over the past decade, Russian aerospace engineering continues advancing at a pace that's forcing Western military analysts to completely recalculate their threat assessments. The assumptions that dominated air combat planning for the past 20 years are being challenged. What we saw in Dubai proves that the global balance in air superiority technology is shifting. Countries that were previously dependent on Western suppliers now have alternatives. Defense networks designed around certain assumptions about detection and engagement ranges need fundamental rethinking. The question isn't whether this technology works. The question is how quickly it proliferates and how other nations respond. The next few years will reveal whether Western air forces can maintain their technological edge or whether we're entering a new era where that advantage has significantly diminished. If you found this breakdown valuable, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future updates on this program and other developments in military aviation. Drop a comment below and let me know which aspect of this nozzle design you found most significant. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more related videos.